In case uh, people out there don't know, uh, superstitions are real. Things that I do and everyone listening does at home will affect the outcome of the game. You know, I was actually, I was actually a little pissed off that you sent up the article of them talking about how like Jason Spezza gave him the pep talk in the locker room in between periods. I was kind of pissed yeah. they didn't include your shotgun video because I definitely feel like the boys played that on a projector screen and everyone was just like, yeah, we have to. I think yeah. they caught an angle of uh, Keith showing on a tablet to the guys on the bench. The shotgun? A couple of the other videos. Yeah. 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 It just, you know what? It's a thankless job, honestly, because like the articles aren't going to write about you, but in the end, we know that I we put made it a in difference. my shift. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A good solid 15 <laughs> second shift. And we won the Toronto Maple Leafs the game. Uh, speaking yeah. of the game. Yeah. <laughs> What a roller coaster. <laughs> I, okay, full transparency. I had to go to work after the first. So for everyone watching this who doesn't, doesn't know from our last uh, last few videos, we watch all together, the Leafs and Lads and a couple of our other friends on Zoom together. We all pause and press play at the same time so that we're not uh, celebrating or crying prior to other people celebrating and crying. And I had to go to work about 10 minutes into the second period. And it was torture yep. because the Leafs oh game God. was on all the screens behind me. And I was kind of like peeking just to look. But every single goal I saw, I would look up and it would be like Nylander's face being so happy. And I'd be like, yes, yes. And then out where I am, it's all Vancouver fans and stuff or Edmonton fans. And it was just like Ooh. no one else was fired up with me. Whereas when we're watching on Zoom together, we're all like, oh, man. Anyways, so yeah. I, I will say... <laughs> That I, I watched the um, I actually rewatched the third period, the full third period. Uh, oh, the last best part. Night. Yeah, so I rewatched it. So I have seen the whole game, not just the highlights. Yeah. And I gotta say, my number one star. We can, we'll talk about other players, but my number one star once again is Jack Campbell because yeah. he made so many big saves that like would have changed the entire outcome of the game. How many did Paul have like five breakaways that game? Oh, it was so gosh. random, but just like every he made big saves on Kucherov, just like everything he did kept them in. We we're tied, tied three, three, and he made a massive yep. save. And we went down a couple minutes later and scored the, the game winner. So my number one star is Jack Campbell. What about you? Uh, I would say Jack Campbell after the first, because I remember, well, everyone after the first, because <laughs> right when the first period ended, we're, we were all pretty bummed. We're like, this mm. is, I'm getting same old, same past, old. yep, past playoff vibes, but then uh, just completely turned it around and uh, Soup made some insane saves mm -hmm. that just got everyone going and the crowd was starting to chant Soup again because think they're a little hesitant at first <laughs> yeah but uh, i have to give it to willie mm. first Why? star he was a uh, reason so after the first people were crapping on him like mm -hmm. where's the effort trade this bum uh, overpaid sid, sid six arrow the uh, ex the guy from tim and sid who's now on a breakfast television show said something like oh, right. i've seen enough of willie that was the main one. And everyone just flooded his, his uh, response. Yeah, replies. it was, uh, yeah, let's get rid of the guy who had the best chances in the first period. Yeah, let's get rid of him. Because and the best after playoffs a while, last he season. He capitalized. Yeah. yeah, best player last season. He finally capitalized on those big opportunities he was getting. He could have had four goals tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Remember that one where if he would have just kept going, and, yeah. but he shot. That was off. A, we both... so, yeah, yeah, it was it was off a play where John Tavares made a sick dangle and the puck leaked through, and yeah. that I, I agree with you that William Nylander like he does frustrate us at times because we know how good he can be, but yeah, sometimes he'll just be like kind of there and then he'll all of a sudden get a massive scoring chance. He had a breakaway once he <laughs> out of the he came out of the penalty box in the first period had a breakaway didn't put it away. But like, yeah, 
you know, he but made he up had for the chance. Yeah, yeah, he had the chance. And in the end, he was the only guy really. In the first, we had four shots. Um, two, <laughs> yeah. two, two of them were William Nylander and one was a breakaway and one was just him right in front of the net. So talk about getting yeah. actual scoring opportunities. But speaking of John Tavares, yeah. uh, we were so hard on John Tavares. And rightfully yeah. so. I'm, I'm yeah. sick of people on Twitter talking about like, oh, he does all the little things. I don't – let's take $11 million out of the equation. He's supposed to be <laughs> a top tier, like top three second line center in the entire NHL would be a first line center on about half of the NHL teams. Right. right. He was, yep. he was next, like invisible out there and he can win some draws, but you know who else can win some draws? Most fourth line centers in the NHL. Right. So it's just like, rightfully so I'm sick of people saying it's all the little things. A lot of people. Yeah. And not saying that I know hockey a lot. I played hockey my whole life. Like I always dove into like the strategy of hockey. Uh, you know, I was the PK guy. I was the power play, you know, but um, he does do some little things, but like not enough to be a top tier second line center. And a lot of people say he's doing little things are just piggybacking off of other people saying he's doing the little things that they don't even know what those little things are. Right. Mm -hmm. And he was winning a bunch of draws at the start of the series, then stopped winning draws. But this game, yeah. second period, and even the end of the first period, he yeah. won it. And it was nice to see. Yeah. My favorite, my favorite thing was when he passed, made a great play on four and four, gave it up to Morgan Riley for the second goal to tie it up. Yeah. And you, he looked at the camera, he's like, let's fucking go. And that was like, that's just not, that's the that. energy we wanted. Exactly. And that was, yeah. that was the start of his honestly dominance in the third period, because that's what yeah. you need him to be, you know? And I hope he can carry it into the next few games. What are your thoughts on Johnny T? Uh, yeah, I think you hit all the main points. This was his big redemption game that he needed because People weren't just getting upset. Like, they're, like, they're getting furious. <laughs> like, he had to do something. And I know you said money aside, but he's literally being paid to do the big things, not just the little things. So I'm glad he stepped up. He brought the energy everyone needed. Um, Spezza made the speech, so he doesn't have to talk. So that's fine. We have guys for that. <laughs> <laughs> and... The other thing was the face-off percentage. Uh, I just wanted to touch on that because we won over like 60% or something crazy this game. And it felt like we were at 40. Like, mm. <laughs> I, Scott and I were, uh, so Scott's our buddy. He was on FaceTime with us. We just kept talking about, man, we can't win a face-off. And then they showed the stats that we we're winning over 60% of them. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, what? Yeah. I don't know if anyone else out there felt the same, but yeah, that was a pretty wild one. But it's just freaking face-off percentages. <laughs> yeah. I think it's that we seem like the important ones. Like if we're on the power play in their zone, mm. we lose that one. Yeah. It's like those are the ones we're noticing, whereas if it's an offside, like no one really notices. You know, it's like it's like Justin Hall, you know, like <laughs> decent most of the game, 98% of the game will make two glaring errors and we're like he sucks you know because we only yeah. notice the things that are right in our face and obvious and we kind of yeah. like we might be talking during a, 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 a face off at the outside the blue line right yeah so. that's right good point uh i guess yeah you mentioned hall we should probably talk about the defense this game uh we were all to say the least shocked that hall was back in mm. but at a game uh, the, I looked at the time on ice and him and Boosh both had 14 minutes each while everyone else were in the 20s, yeah. which I think was perfect for yeah. like this game. Like that's how they should do it. I think every time, like yeah. limited role. <laughs> yeah, and he was out there for like the big penalty kills. So he actually, I know I hate him, but he actually did his job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like i know you don't mean hate but we just like i think yeah. the thing is for us is we look at Lilligren and sandy and we say these are like our future 
And these are guys whose ceiling didn't stop about a few times. The ceiling yeah. is so much higher than Justin Hall that we're like, hey, they could be like elite level defensemen. So like we yeah. kind of want them in. Um, but in reality, like Justin Hall is a, a in this top six of probably every single team in the NHL. Right. So yeah, and what he's getting paid is pretty amazing. Yeah. So like <laughs> we I think we just see more upside in other players. It's not necessarily hate. Uh, it's just yeah. sometimes he'll make dumb, dumb plays, take dumb penalties. But like yeah. in terms of our defense through our entire lives, because for people, we're both 28. I believe it's when we were 10 years old when we last passed our first round. So for 18 years, our defense, Justin Hall, would be probably top four. Yeah. Most, most, if not all of those 18 years. So we're, yeah. we're, we're just spoiled. Pretty sure he was last year. Yeah. Yeah, he was. He was. So we're just spoiled at this point. Um, and <laughs> it's nice to see him, like, with all the noise around him not being good. And, you know, what? in the end, this is why we trust coaches to make the right decisions, because he came in played a great game. Uh, Lily could have played. Yeah, you never know. But, like, the fact that Keith stuck with him instead of after Simmons asked his question, where, like, why'd you start your worst? Yeah and stuff like that <laughs> it's good to see him have a belief and it's nice to see the guys like marner and tavera stick it up for him they had quotes saying stuff like uh he puts his heart and soul like he's does some great things like uh it's nice yeah. to see everyone kind of sticking up for each other um i don't think that a lot of players really trust justin hall as being an offensive defenseman if you remember earlier in the season i think it was a play where he went held on to the puck and they ended up going offside and Austin Matthews said like screamed at him something as he was getting onto the bench and Austin Matthews doesn't do that so who knows how much yeah. they value his offensive upside um oh. but if he plays yeah 14 minutes I think that's perfect him and Boosh especially yeah. want that physical presence but I, I think it might have had something to do with Boosh's finger I don't know if that's going to be an yeah. issue going forward uh we'll have I to monitor not. that yeah but I mean even in the end Lilligren, like, what a great problem to have. Yeah, yeah you can slot him in. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Justin Hall, I think we're – we just see a more upside than other players. But – yeah, and he does make some big mistakes and very glaring mistakes. But in the end, he had a great game. You got to give him some credit. Now, yeah, Jason Spezza. I tweeted something like, is it too late to give Jason Spice the captaincy right now? And yeah. I was in the first because he was like the only, he was showing hard out there. He was talking to Jack Campbell. Apparently he gave that speech in between the first intermission, which was, I would have loved being a fly on the wall for that one. Um, yeah. Cause I feel like he's probably not the guy that does that too much. So when he does, it'll be big, yeah. which is yeah. why. I think that guys like John Tavares need to do that sometimes is because he probably doesn't too no. often give like a huge, like motivating speech. But when he does, people would be like, Oh shit. Like John Tavares is pissed, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I think it's probably <laughs> the same thing with Jason Spezza. Um, yeah. But that's what Willie said. Yeah. Yeah. And I think instead of Jason Spezza, my second star, cause Jack Campbell gets my first cause without him, you lose. Okay. Him, yeah. Is Mitch Marner. Because as we were talking in the group chat last night, the yeah. guys from the start of the game, the first period we all agree was he played like trash. But Mitch Marner yeah, had a it was bad. very good 60 minutes. He played well the yeah. entire thing. He had heart. He was still trying, going out, blocking shots, still uh, cycling well, like giving it his everything. Uh, and Morgan Riley was the other guy that for yeah. the entire game, I thought like was giving heart. And you can like look at guys like John Tavares and Lola for like for the final 40 minutes being awesome, but it's guys who came out the entire game and put everything on the line that I am so happy to see because Marner last year got so much criticism for like not trying yeah. or you know like crying, giving up. Yeah, and um, I just yeah his game was off the entire series. Mitch Marner has been one of the top players in the race, uh, whereas last yeah. year he was like. He was a little bit of a John Tavares, you know? So he gets my second set yeah. for sure. Excellent. Yeah, uh, a 
pretty crazy stat I wanted to bring up was the hits last night. Uh, to lead the Leafs, Austin Matthew had seven mm. hits. Mitch Marner had four. He wasn't only blocking shots. He, he was hitting, shooting, passing. Like, he literally did everything you want out of uh, an 11 million dollar player yeah so yeah definitely agree with the second star with mitch yeah and And uh yeah is austin getting or can we both agree that austin matthews needs to be in that top three or four because yeah (laughs) as soon as the second period started actually the end of the first the last couple minutes of the first on austin matthews woke up and he was the best player yeah yeah, the was, third period was completely different than the rest of the game. He just, mm-hmm. yeah, like you said, turned it on. Yeah, yeah. And he's, he's, been having, he's been having some weird, like, he's not winning all of his puck battles. Like, puck, pucks are skipping on him, which didn't happen in the regular season. But he's still, which not would be shooting. frustrating. On the power play, first period. And yeah. In the second, there's just like, there was, no one was shooting. kind of weird. It was weird. Yeah. yeah. Fast. Um, but I think that. That his goal, his celebration was top oh. notch. Uh, the windmill. Oh man. Um, oh. <laughs> so yeah, he's fire. I think. I honestly think that we can. I know we say this every week. I have not yet predicted the Leafs to lose a single game in the series, but <laughs> we're gonna win next game. We're gonna finally do it because if we go to Game Seven. I'm going to be stressed, but I, I, I still will believe because we don't win this game last year, the year before, the year before that, you know, we go down to yeah. nothing. We pack it and we play like the first period for the entire rest of the game. And yeah, something's different. Something's I, different. I have to agree with that. Yeah. And then the other thing I wanted to mention was Blackwell and Kasha. They only had four and I think six minutes on the ice. And that's it. But uh, I noticed them in the game. I thought they would have had 10, mm-hmm. maybe more minutes each. Mm-hmm. But I, I noticed Blackwell whenever he's on the ice. And Kamikaze Kasha, how can you not notice that yeah. guy? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just hardly any minutes, but impactful minutes. Like, yeah. I I thought, thought... Like, they did not obviously light it up, but they did their job. Well, we were joking about Blackwell that. He played like 30 seconds in the first period and got a puck off the face and drew a penalty, an interference yeah. penalty in his 30 <laughs> seconds. And like he was like the no, one of the most noticeable guys in the first. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was just like, what? Yeah, literally That's just 30 him. second shift. That fourth line is just a kamikaze line at this point. Yeah. Yeah. He's fast. He is fast. Yeah. And he'll try and body check. It's funny. He'll try. <laughs> But it's not it's not doing too much. But he's a he's a perfect fourth he's a perfect fourth line playoff player because he he scored the series like he can still put he can he was on the first line of New York Rangers last year he put up like next to twenty goals I think or over twenty goals so like the guy can no score, way. play um, have oh him on your fourth line you know uh, well everyone on this team second and third period impressed me um, yep. Do you have anything that you would change to line up going into game six? Think, keep in uh, mind, we don't have last change now. So I don't yeah. know if that will affect your lineup decision. Do you make any changes or do you run with the same group? Uh, I don't know. I feel like you just rock with it. Mm-hmm. Like we have momentum going in right now. Like maybe just try and keep it the same and let them play well. I don't know. Because yeah, one of the debates is like, do you put Cliff or Simmons back in? I'm like, I don't know. Like, I, I want them there because I love their physical presence so much. But at the same time, like, we're winning without having to do yeah. as much because other guys are doing it. Uh, what do you think? It'll depend on Labushkin's finger because I think if Labushkin can't yeah. play, you have you put in Lilligren. Um, yeah. And and then you reunite uh, probably Muzzin and Hall, and even though that was tough at the start of the year, kind but scary, yeah, and Carter, yeah. And then you Brody, Riley, uh, Lily, Geo. Um, if if Labushkin is good, I don't think you change the defense. The only okay. thing I would consider is possibly Kasha for Clifford. 
but I would be totally okay if cash is okay there. Cause you're only going to play cash for six minutes. Like, yeah. You know, the good thing about a guy like cash is he can slide up and down the lineup very easily. Whereas Clifford can't. Um, yeah, that's true. But I think what we saw last game was that the fourth line dominated the Leafs. Now that could have just been a one-off. Um, like the Maroon, Belmar, and Perry. It could have just been oh, a yeah. but with last change, you got to wonder if possibly that could have something to do with it. But I think I think you probably stick to the same. I'm not going to be upset if Simmons or Clifford comes in for anybody in the fourth, although I think you have to stay with Spezza after last after game. After that? Yeah. yeah. And Blackwell, because he just makes impactful plays. So I think Kasha is probably the odd man out, which is so weird for me to say because I love Kasha. But I just yeah. think if you're going to make a long playoff run, it's fine if he sits now and again. Yeah, keep him healthy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, excellent point. I could definitely see him having a nice rest day because you're like every shift. He's, that's how he got the name, Kamikaze. Kamikaze, yeah. He's getting yeah. banged up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything else that you want to bring up before we finish this thing up? Please win the next game. <laughs> I oh, can't I- handle it. <laughs> Yeah, I can't. I actually have to do the same thing. I work at, I work midway through the second period. Uh, you got to call in. Pick. Six. No, I'm, I'm having sports. Tomorrow night. night. Sports on my phone. Uh, so yeah. it will be down by the bar and I will be watching. And if someone orders a drink, I will say one second, please. <laughs> um, look over there <laughs> yeah. I do want to just quickly get uh, if, have you been watching any of the other series going on in the NHL uh, the only other one I've actually like sat down and watched is the Rangers Pittsburgh series mm. because Sidney Crosby is looking like prime 20 25. like 15 2012 Sidney Crosby and it's insane yeah yeah, he has been looking awesome. I think Pittsburgh probably closes that out because if Shesterkin's I think good, so, too. They're just not that good of a team. Um, but they have their third-string goalie in. It's yeah, nuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, I, I think Pittsburgh probably finishes that one out. I will say, because I'm already looking on to round two. Oh, my gosh. Do you have a preference between, between Washington and Florida? Uh, yeah, Washington yeah, all day. Okay. Yeah. I would love if they, yeah, somehow. What's their series at? 2-2. Two, two. They play tonight. Oh. Yeah. So I have to tune in for part of that. Yeah, I might, I might have to, too, because I, I honestly would be okay with both. The thing about Washington is you get home ice advantage. Yeah. So that's yeah. a main And thing against, like, me. a weaker, hopefully banged up team. Mm-hmm. Also, also a <laughs> that stat. That would be nice. A stat that, uh. I don't have the exact numbers, but Austin Matthews right. in the playoffs at home is a much better point producer than Austin Matthews on the road. That probably has something to do with um, line matching, right? If you get last chance, yeah. you'll be able to line match the, the point Kaloran line against you. And last year it was the Dino line. The year before that, it was the Felino uh, line. Uh, and the yep. year before that was yeah. Anyways, um, <laughs> uh, I really underestimated the like shut down Tampa Bay line, and I can see mm. how they won the cup now. <laughs> yeah, when you just think their last year's shutdown line was like the second could be a second line of most NHL teams. You know the yeah, Gord, uh, Goudreau, and um, the third one. But, like that's crazy. Yeah, crazy. I definitely and, didn't think they'd be that good this year. <laughs> Yeah, no, Paul looks awesome out there. That was a good – that was almost a better pickup than Hagel because Paul yeah. looked better and you gave up a lot less to get him. But let's not give Tampa any credit. Also, yeah, right. last thing before they we suck. go, John Cooper making consistent comments, discrediting the Leafs. Uh, bother you. Fire you up. What is it for you? Oh, man. I, I, I hardly even read – like Twitter comments now or anything because all I want to see is positivity and all it ever is is negative. Yeah. Like someone's like, oh, great to see Johnny. Too bad this didn't happen. I'm like, what? Yeah. What do you want? Like, <laughs> you can, 
Yeah. You just have to win next game and everything will, I'll read again. I could read Twitter. Yeah. Yep. Uh, oh, man. What are you going to do to celebrate? <laughs> I'm going to run around like a kid and wake my neighbors up. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I still got my cigar. Um, oh, yeah. I'll be at work, unfortunately. Maybe the next day we'll have to light it up because tomorrow night it's going to be the first yeah. time in 18 years. 18 years, everyone, that we're going to make it past the first down. Uh, first round. Historic. Historic. Um, so we're going to leave it that. Uh, everyone in the comments, let us know what your state of mind was after the first period. Did you still oh. have hope? Don't lie. Did you still Versus have Versus the end. Or did you think that it was out of reach? Let us know in the comments, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow night after a Leafs series win. Peace out. Let's go!